Hello, I'm Professor Liu. Welcome to our live stream. I'm joined today with art prof teaching artist Lauren Welch and Jordan McCracken Foster. Today, we are doing a crit clash on what's called the pig couch on the internet. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. There is quite a story behind this pig couch, and there are two articles we linked in the video description below if you guys wanna take a really deep dive, but we're gonna give you guys the overview of how this works. Basically, the pig couch, which is titled Hillhawk. It was created in 2010, and it's been all over the internet on Craigslist. It's been reported in multiple news sources, and it was created by artist Pavia Burroughs in 2010, and it was part of her senior design thesis at the University of Arts in Philadelphia, and the pig couch was part of a living room set that Burroughs designed, although it was supposed to be a chair even though everybody's calling it the pig couch. And the pig couch was actually inspired by this illustration, which was from a book called Masquerade by Kit Williams. And actually, tell me in the chat if you guys remember this book, because I grew up with this book. And I have every single illustration memorized. But the whole story behind this book was that it inspired this international treasure hunt, because the whole book is a puzzle. And the prize, which is what you see here, was this golden hair somewhere buried in Britain. And there was a huge scandal about it because somebody pretended that they knew, but really they found out the information through an acquaintance of the author. It was a mess, but it's a really cool book. And in every single illustration, there's a rabbit hidden somewhere that you can try to find. Now, since 2015, the pig couch has appeared many times on Craigslist and these ads are all hoaxes. None of them are real. And it's all over Nashville, New York City, all over the US. And eventually somebody named Abigail Rowe who replied to one of the postings on Craigslist, they replied to it from an artist who was claiming that it was theirs. But they found out, of course, that it was a hoax because it, there were so many listings. They were all from different people. But actually, Burroughs sold it on Etsy in 2011 to Martin Roche, who had the startup called Sourcefire. And they had the software called Snore. And actually, to this day, <laughs> it's in the office. And as you guys can see, they don't want to part with the pig couch. So there's this whole component of this life of the pig couch that extends beyond the piece itself. And actually Burroughs wanted $950 and they got haggled down to $500. So I sort of feel bad for the artist. <laughs> All right. Now, Lauren, you are going to be arguing for the pig couch. Jordan, you are going to be arguing against the pig couch. And here's how Crit Clash works. We assigned those points of view. This may not be what Lauren and Jordan actually believe in real life. If you wanna know, join us in the Discord to get their real life opinions. So they will present their arguments and at the end of the stream, you guys get to vote on who won the Crit Clash. Jordan, your opening argument against the pig couch. Okay, so I think that the pig couch or the pig chair, because I know it's technically a chair, <laughs> I think the whole novelty behind it is simply the fact that it's become a meme over the last 10 years. I mean, I get that was a part of her thesis project, but the fact that it's blown up all over the place is simply because it's like, oh, it's this bizarre couch. And that's about it. And I've never really heard anyone talk about the, the artistry or the theme that fit in with the sculpture the thesis or anything like that. It's just like, oh, funny looking couch. And then all these people start going around and trying to sell it when they don't really have it, it belongs in some guy's office. So I think that's where the heart of this whole thing sits. It's just, it's a big meme and people find it funny. Well, Jordan, 
Can't you say that all of the best works in history have pretty much been memed? I'm talking about even before memes existed. That Olympia image by uh, that you see with Titian and I think it's Manet and a whole bunch of people, that's basically a meme. And things like Starry Night, which we have cr clashed over, that's also a meme. And so when you have an image like pig couch, which is actually a pig chair, and it is creating this response in people where not only are they posting it everywhere, but they're basically making fakes of it to resell. Isn't that a, a response that shows that mm, maybe there is something here, there's something really engaging about this piece? Remember in Clara's class and foundations, we always talked about the kind of response you wanted your viewers to get. And the worst response you could possibly get was no comment, no interest. This has a ton of interest. So I think it just succeeds in and of itself being on meme level. So the thing for me is I think part of it has to do with the intention. This was, like I said, it was just made for a thesis project. And I really think that a lot of it just comes through the, you know, the mystery of it because, or the interest in it, because even, uh, what was her name, Burroughs, she couldn't even sell it for that much. She wanted to sell it for like 950 and a businessman was like, nah, you only just are 500 and then I'm gonna post it, put it in my office for everyone to sell. And like, on some level, I almost feel like that's, um, not a, like even he didn't really fully appreciate. It. He just thought it was funny because it happened to work with the software title that he already had established. And it was more like a coincidence to me. So I feel like if he had chosen any, literally any other name for his software, then he wouldn't have even bought it. And maybe Burroughs would still be trying to figure out how to get it out of her basement, you know? Um, so I, I don't think that just because it's become popular necessarily means a good piece of art. It's just as simply wow, this is just what happened. It's just a random happenstance. Well, I think that that's kind of unfair to the artist to say that, oh, just because you didn't sell it or you sell, sold it for less than you thought means that, oh, it's not a very good piece. Because especially coming out right out of college, it is hard to sell your work. And the fact that she got interest at all, I mean, that's better than I did straight out of college. I couldn't sell my work for a thousand dollars. It takes time to develop that. So she found a buyer. I think that that's cool. But even if you really want to get into it on this craftsmanship kind of level, I mean, Claire's got this picture up right now of of some of the details. And I think that her choice of materials and the way that she's sewn them together, it shows a, a real knowledge of how to make a soft sculpture object. This is an actual chair that you can sit in and use. Well, we have a lot of opinions on the pig couch. Neil is saying, I would wanna hug it though and sit on it and sleep on it. So let's talk a little bit about the functionality because this is part of somebody's <clears throat> design project so what about the utilitarian part of that jordan why don't you take a stab at that i think this works the like this functions as a whole set like we talked about how it had like a, a another table next to it we had a rug and a lamp and it's supposed to be a part of this whole piece or this whole um I get a yeah, piece, this whole project. And just because she was trying to get rid of it, we had to, she had to separate those things. And it just so happened that the, the chair, or the pit couch just stood out. And I mean, I understand why it would stand out, but it's so bizarre, it's so weird that really to me, it's kind of, I kind of related to the Duchamp urinal kind of thing where it's just like, it's bizarre. I don't know why this is here. It might be, it might give me a laugh for a couple minutes. And then I walk on and move on with the rest of my life. And I don't ever really want to think about it ever again. It doesn't leave such a strong impact on me where I feel it necessary to, um, to want to buy it. I think that's a mistake on, on your part. If you're, if you're wanting to, to win this, to compare it to the Deschamp uh, ready-made since that transformed the idea of how sculpture works and what assemblage is and how objects are even viewed 
in the 20th century. I would love it if Pig Couch was on that level. And I think that you're going to have to take these pieces apart if you're going to move on from your thesis just in real life. You can't carry this installation around wherever you go. But if we want to talk about as that whole group, let's look at the ingenuity of materials here. We have this satin and velvet pink material used to sew this together. There's a clear understanding of how a pig sits. It's got a real believable bulk and weight to it. There is some taxidermy eyes in there. Where do you get taxidermy eyes and this choice to put them in this pig so it has a presence? This, this pig is almost a living thing, which is crazy to me. And also the walnut hooves, she had to probably carve those or get those shaped into the little the little trotters. So there, there's a lot of thought going into exactly what material is going to make this its most piggly self. Okay, so you, you talk about the materials and stuff, and I don't think that simply interesting or unique materials is going to make a good project. It's sort of like saying an interesting idea automatically makes a good film. You know, like, ain't nobody asked her to make make a couch out of taxidermy eyes. Like, who, like, what? You know, like, who, why, why would that be something I want in my house? You know, those things. Uh, someone put it earlier in the chat. Um, I can't remember who it was, so forgive me. But it said, uh, this, this face will give me nightmares or it's going to haunt my nightmares or something like that. And um, I don't, you know, it's just bizarre. It's just so weird. And I don't think that it's something that is is really meant to give it much more thought than, oh, it's a couch that or chair that looks like a pig. See, I disagree with you because you do, you're saying that these are just strange materials and we shouldn't judge it on that. I'm saying that these materials were used in a pretty convincing way to create something that is more than just a pig and more than just a couch. It's something that is going to haunt people's dreams at night. It's the kind of thing that is staring back at you literally. And I think that's really hard to do with a piece of art is not just make it an object, not just make it something functional that lives in your house, but give it a soul. And I think that this pig does have a soul or maybe it eats other people's souls. My partner and I were talking about beforehand how perhaps this couch, if you're alone with it at night, it eats people through the, when you sit down into it. And so- Why, why would you want that in your home? So. Maybe, but she wasn't, she wasn't making this originally for a home. She was making this installation that was all things that in the, in, in the functionality setting, they, they could be in a home, but like, really, are we going to have a dirt rug in our home? It's this kind of weird line between, is this art for a museum or a gallery or installation, or is this, uh, flower painting that you're going to hang on your wall. I think context means a lot in this case. Dara yeah. is saying, would you feel comfortable eating bacon while sitting on your new prized chair? <laughs> and Seven Angelic points out, my friend has a pet pig. He is almost the size of this chair, so it's kind of accurate. And Sonnet says, this couch reminds me of a piece of furniture you'd find in nothing but trouble, the film or Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, let's talk a little bit more about those materials because we have a lot of comments about that. Summer Hoyt says, big couch is crafted and mimicking something from nature, not too unlike many other things humans are drawn to or find desirable. Humans have been putting figures of animals in their homes since cave days. So it seems like some people would love to live with this, but Rachel says this does not belong in a kid's room. <laughs> Vanessa says, I'd rather lie on a llama sofa. I think it would be fluffier. Well, what about just the subject, pig, and combining that with a couch? Because there's lots of fun couches out there, a couch that looks like a turtle. And th this is not new in terms of combining functionality with an image. So Jordan, what about the choice of a pig as opposed to say Vanessa says a llama? I mean, I, I, I think again, with the theme, 
I, I I guess it would fit. I mean, there's the dirt rug, but that's about as far as I can take it. Um, it just seems like a really random object, and I imagine it probably just fits because pigs are usually uh, usually kind of fat, and the filling of the sofa will work. But uh, it doesn't really impress me. I think it would be more interesting if she had uh, chose something that was a little bit more difficult that had lots of patterns on it, like like a giraffe or something. I think think would be kind of cool. Or even like the llama someone brought up. So a pig just seems like the first thing I would think of to me. I don't feel like it's stretched far enough. And that that causes some sort of distance. I'm like, ah, eh, people use do pigs all the time for this sort of thing. Do they though? Have you heard of any other pig chairs? Because I haven't. This is the first one I've seen. I've seen plenty of other animals like the turtle. Well, I mean pigs like as in a subject matter, like people tell stories about pigs all the time and uh, you know, just have that as such sort of I, I, some sort of iconography. So whether it's a chair or not, I think is really does besides the point. It's just this animal, I don't think it's that inspiring. It's not something I go like, oh wow. Like if someone had made a giraffe chair and it was like 10 feet tall and you could see like the patterns of the, of the giraffe um, patches or whatever, like that would make me go like, oh, that's really cool. That's unique. I really haven't seen that. But really this chair is just, it's the same color as a pig. And then on one side, just kind of plopped a pig head on there and on the feet or the, um, or the feet have put the little walnut pieces for the toes. It's just like, bam, that's, that's really it. It's, so it doesn't really strike me as anything like, that you know that unique or interesting see for something like a giraffe chair that is actually something that makes me think more <clears throat> like why why does this exist oh it's probably more because of the dazzling patterns and and the weird shape i actually think it's a really good idea to combine a pig with a chair just in the way that it it is laying out like that you have themes like like gluttony or or sloth that could be tied with this because it is a couch it is somewhere you sit pigs are also tied to that but then also just the weight of the pig the way you see them lying down very much can resemble that sort of chair shape i think it was really cool to combine both this sitting function and this laying down body of a pig i love the way that the shoulders are moved over they feel like these really muscular heavy shoulders and they're plopped over with the pig's face that feels really believable to me and even the thigh where the little the little hoof is sticking out out of there also falls into the same i i read this pig body out of this and other things that are tying that in for me are the nice believable folds of of the ears, how those ears fall down like that. And they're very simply sewn on there. And also the structure of the face, the mouth, the way that the seams are lined up, the way that you have that bottom seam where the snout is sewn together, it feels like a smile, but the expression shifts depending on the lighting, which again, furthers this, oh, this, this chair has a presence, this pig has a presence. I am living with this creature, I'm not just, sitting on a sofa. I feel like you can do that with just about any creature you wanted to come up with. Like most creatures will have four legs, so you can use those as the four legs of the chair. You can create a certain pattern. You can sew it in a certain way to give it, to make it have that seam and, and figure it out. Like, you know, I don't think that's all that unique. It just feels like here's the frame of a couch, here's a pig face and some legs, and then they're, and then apparently a little tail in the back. Like that's just, that's really it. There's not a whole lot more else to it. It's just like, you know, and I feel like there were, there's a lot more other things that you can use and create that are more challenging that would make me say, oh, wow, what an interesting perspective. Whereas with this, it's just like a sunken hole in a pig. And that's, that's about it. And I, if I were to see this in person, I'd probably just look at it and be like, huh, and just keep going. You know. I think that you're having, that you're misunderstanding how difficult it is to be a sculpture or fiber or furniture artist and how you meld those things together. It's kind of like going to a museum and seeing a piece of abstract art and saying, 
oh, my kid can do that. I think that's what the equivalent of your argument is right now. And I think going there is probably a bad direction as far as maybe art history goes or just respecting the ability for someone to make something like this goes because it is actually really very hard. I'm sure it is difficult, but it doesn't make it you know, something that I have to admire or something that I think other a lot of other people will. Uh, you know, drawing is difficult, but not everybody cares about any, like any drawing or, or painting or whatever. It's just the way that it is. So I don't think equating um, how hard it is to you should appreciate it more because it's difficult makes any sense. Except that was just what your previous argument was pretty much saying was that, oh, this doesn't take skill to make. I never said it didn't take skill to make. I said there could be more interesting options, but that I, I really, <clears throat> I really don't think that like for, and it, again, it could just be me. I'm just not interested in this sort of stuff. And uh, clearly a lot of other people are for whatever reason. But I think again, it's the novelty of the, the mean thing. And I don't think it really has anything to do with like, oh, wow, look at the way it's sewn together. Look at the, it's like, oh, it's a pig. I think that's what makes people interested. <laughs> Claire, why don't you read the comments? We got a few good ones here. C. Cantrell says, I feel like the materials are appropriate. This is a good comment because actually when you fabricate something, you do have to think about, well, what kind of fabric am I gonna use? What color am I gonna use? I assume it is upholstery velveteen so it will wear fairly well. And so that definitely is a comment about the utilitarian part of it, but we have a lot of people talking about the symbol of a pig and what a pig means beyond a literal pig. Maria says, I think we all saw at least once the art pieces depicting the modern urban man as a pig on a couch. And we also have a comment from Vanessa who says, pigs are thought to be dirty or impure animals in some cultures. So depending on the person, to gift a pig couch like that would be offensive. So we also have some furniture information. Comcuke says, you can, but Ottoman stools and cabinetry, that's all shaped like a pig. It's a short, stumpy animal that applies to furniture easily. Let's pivot to talking about the internet hoax postings. Lisa says, I think the internet hoax postings are an interesting discussion point. I don't actually see conning money in real life. So were the posts more a statement? Well, that's a great point because when you put out an ad on Craigslist, the assumption is that you're selling it or you're giving something away. I'm sure people inquired and got some funky things. So Jordan, what about the internet hoax postings part? Okay, so from the so if I'm make I'm gonna pretend that I'm one of these people trying to post this up. If I'm doing this and I say, hey guys, check this out. I found this weird chair and I'm gonna post it. I think that is about as far as it goes. I don't think they're going, look at the artistry. Are we gonna have people study what this person made it out of and we're gonna describe all these crazy details. And you know, it's like, hey, let's see if we can trick people. Um, I don't think it goes much further than that from the perspective of someone who's trying to sell it on Craigslist or whatever other website that's on. Um. Before I get into a response here, I just want to thank Nikolai for for the super chat. The super chat is saying pig couch call these offended Jordan, which I, I really feel here. I really feel like this this pig is a threatening presence to you, Jordan. Well, well I'm offended that the pig couch is offended, all right? <laughs> anyway, thank you, Nikolai. So I think that this, once you get into this hoax territory, it, it makes this whole thing so much more interesting. One thing that I've learned about in my classes recently is how a still life or an object can accrue many meanings over time. And that adds to the richness of the object and the richness of history. An object has a lifespan. And so this pig couch here as an object has accrued multiple meanings at this point. You have the the, the snort or the the company that that bought this this couch and this is their mascot to them. It's also their really creepy nightmare coworker. To the artist, it originally belonged in the set where uh, 
it referenced the, that that book and was supposed to be a weird furniture set for this book. And then for the internet, it has become this meme type thing or hoax where people pull this out from time to time and say, hey, there's this pig couch out here. Will someone pick it up? And it reminds me of other modern hoax type things that have happened, say with Banksy, where there, where Banksy, who is anonymous, will put something out there in the world. And then you'll get fake Banksy people that also try to sell Banksy things. And so it has this weird place in both internet value market and real value market that is getting all crossed up. Like, is this pig $500? Is it $11,000? Which I just find an interesting thing to follow over time that this pig has multiple lives at this point. Here's the thing. I, I don't think that, that, first of all, I don't think that was the intention of the artist for one. It was just like, I'm trying to create a cool thesis. I want to get out of school and go on with my life. Um, the fact that it's made so many, I guess we'll call headlines on the internet, I think is besides the point. And it's almost, it's very much a coincidence. Actually the, the whole snort, um, software thing that is a pure coincidence and there was no way he was like inspired by this couch to name his software snort like that just didn't happen he's like i have it snort blah 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 blah. I'm looking on the internet oh interesting we can use that like it's just pure happenstance okay um the other thing what people post on the internet everyone here knows that there is a very strange side to the internet sometimes and things get a little bizarre and this Couch for I, I think for very clear reasons have made to has made to the bizarre side of that and but at the same time it doesn't lead me to uh, to really have any sort of heartfelt uh, meaning or, or appreciation for it. I'm like okay it's cool it's a big couch whatever and I'm kind of I mean I don't want to say it's the worst thing I've ever seen because it's not but it's just it doesn't leave an impact on me and. There, there was a comment earlier from someone, I can't remember, but it was saying that um, something about having a profound uh, meaning to the couch. And I was like, you know, I don't really, like why would I care about some sort of profound meaning? It's it's a chair, it's a couch. I need, just need to sit on it and sometimes I'll take a nap on it. That's about as far as I go and it's got a pig head. Bam, I'm done. You know, give me my A so I can walk out with my degree. Eloise is saying so many chairs and couches are made from the hide of animals. And that was a thought in seeing this mesmerizing on many levels. And we also have a comment from Elias who says, I imagine all the internal and external layers to make it real comfortable and aesthetically pleasing. And W315 says, I'm pro pig, but I think not from any of Lauren's arguments. It was seeing the entire installation that sold me on it. Well, let's talk about that because the pig couch is not part of that installation anymore. Now it's on its own. And by the way, I did want to give a, what was, where was it? There was a question, I believe it was from Neil. Oh yes, does the artist have anything to do with the hoax? They do not, it's completely yeah. separate. The internet posting thing. There was, I believe an artist who is known for doing fake ads and they do mention it in the Artnet article. It's linked in the video description below. You guys can read about that, but no, the, the artist has nothing to do with that. So let's talk about all that stuff in terms of it, it was a set and now it's not anymore. Right. More. I I do think Jordan brought up previously a good point about the object about the pig going on and existing and um, being part of these, this hoax like was not the artist's intention, so why should we care? And I think that there's a point in that in that the objects that we have, both the ones that we make as artists and the ones that we have right now are not our own. They eventually pass out of our existence, especially the ones that we make. Like they, they are partially ours in that we made them, but eventually they get to a point where they belong to someone else. The idea belongs to someone else. The meaning of them is not the one that you put out there anymore. And I think that that 
is a valid part of the object of the pig. And I'm thinking of instances where that's happened that have been very profound, like Pepe the frog, which also started out as a meme, but became a huge rallying point in the US for right wing group of people. But then in Hong Kong, it's something totally different and is a rallying for protests out there. Two totally different meanings from the same object. Extremely interesting that they both exist. So I think that if the pig has this one meaning through a hoax, has another meaning through a set setup like this and this installation, and has another for this guy that owns it in his company with the, the snort software. These are all valid things that sit on the same level beyond just the artist's intention. Now, as far as the original installation goes, I think if I saw this in a museum that had this set up, I personally, I would say I would want a lot better lighting than that. Don't really like that lighting <laughs> too much. But <laughs> if, if I saw this in a museum, I, it would stop me. I would sit there and I would wonder, oh, what is going on here? Why is there a pig couch? Why is there moss come or why are there roots coming out of this table? It is enough. There's enough hook there to, to draw me in. And then I think beyond that, with these, these ideas about laziness or animal hides or cruelty to animals or a pig in a book. All of these are enough to have me sitting there engaged, wondering what's going on and remember it afterwards. And I, that's my highest priori priority to me, I think, as an artist, is to create that open-endedness that allows me to think about these different levels going on after I leave the gallery. Okay, so <clears throat> you know what that whole thing reminds me of is when I'm sitting in English class and I'm reading some sort of book from like 500 years ago and then my teacher just brings out all these meanings that weren't intended in the book, like the rug is blue. And it's like, oh, it's talking about blue because it's, 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 and they go on this whole rant, you have to write a paper on it and you suddenly hate life. That's kind of what that reminds me of. Because there are some times where the artist will create something and they're like, all right, we have this, this, and this. And I think a lot of the unique quality behind this is, like I said before, some because people on the internet took it and did their own thing. It doesn't make it, and, and I think, I wanna say it cheapens it, but I do think I have to look at it differently because when it's not a part of the artist's intention, I question uh, the validity of those statements oftentimes. And because sometimes just, it might not have anything to do with that. It's like, no, maybe I just wanted to create this. Uh, and and people are gonna have personal opinions on everything. You can, you can have a personal opinion about any given word, I don't know, glove, like glove could mean an infinite number of things, infinite numbers of people. Um, and as far as it being part of the installation, I said earlier that I think it works much better as a part of the installation because it has a co much more cohesive theme. Doesn't mean I personally like it, but I could see that much better than just taking the weird pig couch because out, out of context, it just becomes like almost laughable to me. It's just like, huh, okay. But when I see it as a part of the whole structure, I'm like, okay, I can at least get an idea. Okay, the the dirt rug thing and the the roots and all that. I'm like, okay, I can at least see an image here. But I think a lot of it does will end up going down to personal opinion and personal appreciation. And for people like myself, I'm just meh. It's it's just bizarre. And the fo the farthest I can go is like it'll give a chuckle out of me, and I move on. Like I don't think it's anything. To to really dwell on. I certainly, if it were not for the Crick Clash, we'll have talked about it for 30 minutes <laughs> or thought about it for 30 minutes. So it's just like, yeah, okay. Jordan, you said that this is just like an English assignment that you hate where we're pulling meanings out of thin air, but one, you went to art school where this is all we do for artwork. Yeah, Two, <laughs> you do this for Avatar The Last Airbender all the time, and three, you participate in Art Prof, where we also do this all the time for all different art objects. So. Sure. Okay, so so let's talk about that briefly. One, I always hated that in art school. I always hated that kind of stuff, going, like, bringing on all these different wild means. Like, that's totally not what I was thinking. Now, am I, and 
to help you out, I will say there are times where, because I don't want to be embarrassed, I will go along with what other people think my project's about so I can pretend I'm much smarter than I really am. I think everyone's guilty of that. I've totally done that. But I recognize that and I just kind of am like, I want to get out of here because I clearly don't know what they're talking about anymore. So that that's one thing. The other thing, you talk about Avatar Last Airbender. Here's the thing. I am, as most people know, I'm currently in the process of writing my own story, my own project, and I see how much detail has to go into writing something that deep. And I don't think I've even said anything on our prop that's outside of what most people think of the show. I, I don't think I brought up any bizarre, strange theory that the writers haven't thought of, okay? And what was your third thing? Remind me, please, so I can cover that. Oh, you're part of Art Prof, and this is all we do. Oh, part of Art Prof, and that's all we do. That's right. So, you know, I whenever I critique something, I actually personally try to stay away from going into the bizarre realm or just like the finding meaning in the place that I don't think it, it exists. Because that's just personally not- This is a bad faith argument. You're saying that I'm making this up and that it doesn't exist. That is bad faith. No, no. You, what you're saying is that because I'm part of brought that I will make those arguments all the time. I personally don't like doing things like that. I will try and stick with the technical fundamental, like, okay, this is how we can make this better. This is how we can improve that. And I try not to dwell on those things personally. Cause, and you called me out. So I'm like, all right, let me address me personally. <laughs> Tom Cuke is saying, I agree that the audience adding meaning via interpretation holds little relevance as it has nothing to do with the artist's intent. That's true because the artist did not mean for this whole internet life to occur. And that is something we talk about is, well, they didn't mean for it to come out that way. That's just what happened. And Com Cuke says, as a follow-up, projecting your interpretation on an artist's work doesn't change that the artist had an intent, theme, or message with their work. I feel like disregarding the artist's intent does a disservice to them. Lauren, what about intent? Intent is a tricky thing, and it's something that all artists have to deal with, because when you make an object, it's never just about you, it's never just about the object. It is a triangle. It is you, your object, and your audience, or your viewer. And all those three things come together to make a piece. I would add as part of that is probably the context that it's placed in. That So maybe it's a square that we're looking at. And so it's hard to distill things and look at them only by the artist's intent or only by the audience's intent. And that gets even harder after an artist dies and their artwork is still around because then the artist is not there to vouch for it anymore. So we may be looking at a lot of pieces in history, a lot of very famous pieces, and say, oh, they mean this and feel really sure about that. But we don't actually know if that is the artist's intent, unless they wrote really long, super long essays about it. But that's rarely the case. So I think if you're going to totally say that the art, it, or it's only about the artist's intent and the audience has very little relevance, then you're basically discounting all of art history. I like reading these opposing comments, like Neil is saying, this is some ammunition for you, Lauren, but just because Jordan can't find meaning in this couch, it doesn't mean that other people can't. Although W315 is saying Jordan is right though. If you're making art on commission or to be popular, why add obscure meanings? Guys, it is time for us to vote on who won this crit clash. And while you guys tell us in the chat, we are going to do an art prof share, which is where one of you guys in the community creates an artwork in response to one of our videos. So today we are looking at this piece by Megan B, which was created in response to this video that we have here, which was part of this series called The Elements of Art, talking specifically about shape. So let's go back and take a look at Megan's piece again. And Megan says that they often overlooked art fundamentals, wasn't really open to learning the basics. They say, because I didn't understand their importance, this video not only expanded my thinking about shape, 
but it introduced me to amazing new artists and techniques, including mezzotint. I now understand why art essentials like shape are so essential. And so after the video, Megan explains that they practice making shapes for 30 minutes with markers. They created the Christmas tree after loosening up. Looks like nothing that they have ever done before. Megan says, I will be much more attuned to the elements of art, both in my own work and when I look at other art. So Jordan, how did Megan do absorbing these lessons about shape? I think Megan did a really great job. And I, the first thing that struck me was just how different this Christmas tree looks compared to any other tree. Like generally I will see just triangles going, you know, um, skinny at the top and big at the bottom and going down. And I love seeing the, the little curves, the, the way that the little star at the top is drawn. I think it's a lot of fun, very graphic in terms of shape elements. And um, I think her understanding is growing significantly based on what she's putting here. What about you, Lauren? Yeah, I love the playful balancing act going on here. I feel like I'm really attuned to the gravity in a way that I'm not in seeing just a typical image of a tree. I want to take this to my, my roommates and say, hey, we showed me a tree like this because <laughs> it's, it's so much more interesting than the tree that we drew, which is a, a typical tree was. I only wish that the present had a similar mentality to it down there. But it's because I love the tree and the the little balls and the and the way that their the tips are touching like so much. It's wonderful. Well I love it because I feel that the typical shape that is assigned to a Christmas tree is a triangle. You see that everywhere. And yet this completely is against all of that. I love that the bottom looks almost like a boat shape or something. It's just so not what you expect to see from a Christmas tree. So great job, Megan, on your unusual take on a Christmas tree. If you guys would like to be considered for an Art Prof share, go to artprof.org, click on tutorials. There is a button that says submit your Art Prof share that will take you to a submission form so you can be considered for a YouTube shout out, but you can also tag us on Instagram, art.prof, and use hashtag artprofshare. All right, let's see what is going on in terms of the voting, because I was thinking with the first comment, we got Lauren, 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 but apparently the Jordan people were taking their time. <laughs> Tom Puke says Jordan. Vanessa says Lauren, but I totally feel like shipping some cake to Jordan. <laughs> happy too. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. We're, we're and Scott is team perfect. Jordan because he made the most from a difficult argument position. Lauren was good and really pushed how I thought of this piece though. Maria still against the pig couch but Lauren's arguments were more structured. Ha, Karen says, Lauren made chops out of Jordan, I am afraid. I just love all of these comments. Slepnir, we can always count on you. Cloven hoof up for Lauren. And Summer says, I was really compelled by Jordan's points and I started leaning more towards Lauren, so Jordan convinced me, wow. Oh wait. Big Hand says, Lauren made good points, but Jordan is right. Oh. Without it set, it just feels gimmicky. I love Big Hand 4, no. <laughs> this is rough, you guys. Okay, hang on a second. I got to scroll all the way up to the top. So Lauren has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, let's see, nine, 10, 11, 12. Uh, it's not looking good, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's Lauren. Lauren's got 12. And I got to scroll up to see Jordan. Jordan is one, two. Uh, Jordan, uh, 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 three. I'm going to say, you guys, that Lauren won this crit clash, but Jordan, you, you had a rough position. <laughs> and Lauren was out yes. for the blood today. So. Our prof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. Now, if you guys want to know 
what Lauren and Jordan actually believe about the pig couch in real life. You're going to want to join us in the Art Prof Discord in the Crit Clash Reveals channel. The invite link is in the video description below. Although there are two people who just came here for time. <laughs> Good time. <So>, uh, <laughs> I don't know. You should That's vote before we do time. the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family. Thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who keep us up and running. And thank you to everybody. I have to say, these were just priceless comments <laughs> that we got in the chat today. So thank you so much. 